Okay, let's unpack this. Today, we're doing a deep dive into the strategic weather and uh, climate risk assessment for Europe, Western Russia, and the North Caucasus. We're looking specifically at the end of August 2025, August 22nd to 31st. Our source material, well, it's packed with detailed atmospheric analyses, regional forecasts, and our mission is pretty simple. Pull out the key insights, help you understand the big patterns and you know what they actually mean. Because the core story here seems to be these really stark contrasts, severe weather, effectively splitting the continent. Yeah, what's truly fascinating here um, is that the forecast really hinges on this powerful and incredibly stable uh, atmospheric dipole. Think of it like two opposing pressure systems, like kind of locked in place, a real continental pug of war. We're seeing this dominant blocking high pressure ridge just parked over Western and Central Europe. The big European models, like from ECMWF, they show this system just disrupting that normal West East flow. It's a major atmospheric stalemate. Okay, so it's like a giant atmospheric roadblock, basically, rerouting the weather, which explains why, you know, the UK Met Office sees that persistent low over Scandinavia affecting the British Isles. It all clicks together. You get the split really dry and hot in one place and then unsettled, wet, quite different conditions elsewhere. Exactly. And this blocking high, it's not just sitting there. It's going to mature into what we call a heat dome starting over southwestern Europe, but then expanding northeast. Yeah. So imagine this lid on the atmosphere. Air sinks, it warms up, and it traps that hot air underneath. We could see temperatures uh, maybe 12 to 15 degrees Celsius above average, higher up in the atmosphere, over places like Hungary, Croatia, Serbia. And this isn't just heat, right? It's what we'd call a systemic hazard amplifier. It dries up the soil super fast, really ramps up the wildfire risk, hits air quality. It's a big deal across a huge area. Wow. So this high pressure really bends the jet stream out of shape. What's the like the most dramatic result of that when you get that really amplified meandering pattern? What happens at the edges? Well, that warp jet stream, it creates something known as a ring of fire pattern. See inside the heat dome, it's stable. But on the fringes, we're talking Italy, the Adriatic, the Balkans, particularly that's where the jet stream provides the trigger, the spark, if you like, for severe thunderstorms. Estefex forecasts are showing really high instability, uh, maybe 1,000 to 2,500 joules per kilogram of KPE. Right, CPE, that's the storm fuel, basically. Yeah, exactly, the atmospheric energy. And you combine that with strong wind shear, uh, 15 to 25 meters per second. That's winds changing speed and direction with height. That mix is perfect for supercells, the kind that can produce, you know, very large hail, damaging winds, even tornadoes. And that sets up that really dangerous situation you sometimes see, the drought to deluge thing, where you have intense heat baking the ground, making it hard, and then suddenly torrential rain hits. Precisely. The baked ground can absorb the water quickly, leading to flash floods. We can see localized totals over 200 millimeters, plus the risk of landslides in hilly areas. Okay, so with this split continent picture in mind, let's zoom in a bit. Regionally, Western and Central Europe, France, Germany, they look like the epicenter of the heat. Yeah, low 40 Celsius, maybe 12, 14 degrees above average. That's got to hit agriculture hard. And river shipping, Ryan, Danube. Definitely. Major stress on both. Meanwhile, you look at the British Isles. Scandinavia, much more unsettled, wetter. There's also some uncertainty maybe from the remnants of extropical systems, like Hurricane Aaron potentially influencing things. Then Eastern Europe, Western Russia, Moscow, for instance, they seem to be in a zone of, let's say, relative climate respite, cooler, maybe 16 to 20 Celsius with some rain. They're outside that main heat dome influence. Yeah. And the North Caucasus expect hot, dry conditions mostly, but there's this um, latent hailstorm risk. It's due to the specific topography and moisture coming off of Black and Caspian Seas. We've seen similar setups trigger bad hail there before, like back in August 2015. Okay, so connecting the specific forecast to the, you know, the bigger picture, this isn't just a freak event, is it? No, not at all. We have to see this in context. Europe is the fastest warming continent, already about 2.3 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Mm. And attribution science, that's the field studying human influence on whether it tells us heat waves like this, are well, statistically and physically almost implausible without climate change. Think back to the 2019 heat wave. Studies showed it was five to 100 times more likely because of human activity. So this kind of pattern. It's increasingly becoming Europe's new normal. And that drought to deluge cycle we mentioned, that's a clear sign of the hydrological cycle intensifying because a warmer atmosphere just holds more moisture. Right. So bringing it back to the listener, what does this actually mean for you? How does it impact everyday life? We touched on agriculture, crop losses, hail. What else? Uh -huh. Well, energy grids get stressed. 
definitely. Power plants need cooling water, and low warm rivers cause problems. Public health is a major one. Prolonged heat, those tropical nights where it stays above 20 Celsius, they really increased heat-related illnesses. And transportation, too. Railway lines can buckle in extreme heat. And we already mentioned the problems for river shipping. So these aren't just separate weather events happening randomly. They're interconnected. The risks compound across the continent, affecting yeah. so many sectors. Exactly. And, you know, this really raises an important question for all of us, doesn't it? The challenge now isn't really debating if these kinds of events will happen more often. They are. The real challenge is building the societal resilience we need. How do we manage this escalating frequency, this severity of climate-driven events? Because they're, well, they're an inescapable feature of our time now.